Thomas Tuchelibán has now left Bayern Munich and finally we have a new coach. It is Van Sant Company. Yes, it is Van Sant. That's how you pronounce his name. He said it himself. And right now, I am taking him away from the likes of Burnley and putting him into the Bayern Munich squad. As a Bayern fan, this is an immense moment for me. You guys have seen me complain about Thomas Tuchel online for so many times. And finally, it has happened. I am so glad it has. Now, people are going to be questioning the decision of Bayern Munich, though, because obviously this man right here, Vincent or Vincent Company, he is not necessarily known for having a great season this time around. With Burnley, he has gone down from the Premier League, relegated into the Championship, and people are saying he has basically failed upwards. Now, let's see if that is true. Hashtag let's do this. Right there he is with the new jersey that he'll be holding up for a while now. I can only tell you this. I have watched Vincent Company as a coach at RSC Anderlecht. And I've also watched him as a coach at Burnley. Now, the main season where I watched him at Burnley was the championship, all right? So just keep that in mind as I'm telling this, because a lot of people have said that in the Premier League, he has been quite underwhelming. And I totally understand the issue there. They have gone down into the championship yet again. And right now, I'm going to be assigning this coach right here because for some reason I can't get out of this freaking screen. Leave me alone and let me show you what it's about. He is joining a squad with the top scorer in Harry Kane, the top talent in Germany alongside with Florian Wirtz, Jamal Musiala, the silkiest dribbler of them all in world football right now. A man that can break down tactics of opponents by himself, who had the responsibility to break down defenses to get the team moving forward so many times. And now he's going to be uh, led by the likes of uh, company. And Leroy Sané, a former player that played alongside company, which is going to be very interesting. I've seen a lot of talks about him and the relationship with company already. And it looks like he is going to be one of the key players that company is going to be playing. Now, I also, in the last rebuild, as you guys know, you have seen that the likes of Kingsley come on. It could be interesting. I personally love him. I think, in my opinion, he's one of the best players I've watched live, but... He is linked to Barcelona and I am seeing news that Bayern Munich are maybe open to a transfer and that is quite interesting. So we'll see what happens there. We also have Goretzka and Lima in here because Kimmich has been uh, relegated to the right back position. But I truly do believe that Kimmich is not going to be playing that position in the upcoming season. I think he's going to go back into that midfield. I think company is going to be appreciating a lot what Kimmich can do in that uh, six or eight position rather than playing in the right back spot where yes he did have some great games but it just doesn't feel right when he's in that right back position and I think Bayern Munich with Sasha Bowie coming back from injury and Mazraoui actually stepping up and performing sometimes as well they do have some great options there so we shouldn't be focusing on that too much but the fact that Eric Dyer has taken over the center back position from the likes of Kim Min Jae and Upamecano blew my mind it, it still does and i really hope that kim or upamecano do get the spot of eric daya in this upcoming season i think company is probably going to be wanting to play these lads and then davies now with company coming into this Bayern munich squad he has reopened the talks to sign a contract extension instead of going to real madrid which a lot of people thought is definitely going to be happening this summer we are seeing rumors about alfonso davies possibly sticking around and with all these players there's still a lot of questions for the future manuel noya has come out and said that he is going to be playing next season the euros are not going to be the last tournament he plays even though if Germany end up winning it, I really wonder what he's going to do. But I think Neuer loves football too much to let it go. But at least one more season is what we are hearing at, at this moment in time. So that's going to be interesting. But then you also have the likes of uh, Thomas Müller, the likes of Gnabry. A lot of question marks still in this squad. And I am here to answer them all. As a Bayern fan, as a viewer of company at Anderlecht and Burnley in the championship, I think... He played some incredible football, specifically at Burnley in the championship. And I think if he gets 
again, yet another team that has the best squad in the league, like he did with Burnley in the championship, I think he can basically dominate the same way. The question is going to be, is he going to be good enough to take this team to the European stage and do well with them? I think that is going to be the biggest test for company. And I cannot wait for the next Champions League season to find out if he's up to it. First thing I'm doing is going through the players that I think could move on with the signing of the likes of company. And I think Goretzka is one of those candidates. At this point, he's going to be 29 years old. I think it is time for him to possibly move on because too many times he hasn't really shown his worth to this team. And I think it would be making a lot of sense to sell him for a decent amount to like the Premier League or something, cash in on him and go for a younger alternative in his position and someone that could be the next, the, the number one next to Kimmich basically for a very long time. Nothing against Goretzka, but I don't think he is fit for the starting 11. And I don't think he's the type of player that just sits on the bench. He's like right on, on the verge, like in between those two areas. So I think it just makes sense for him to move on and just, you know, continue his career somewhere else. And he only has like two years left on his contract too, which again, just makes a lot of sense to move him on. Going away from that, I am hearing a lot of rumors about Upamecano being put onto the transfer list by Bayern Munich as well, because he has made one too many mistakes in these past few seasons. That performance against Manchester City is one that a lot of people will not forget. And Bayern owners and directors seemingly want to move him on. And I get it. I understand. In my opinion, he's incredible moving forward with the ball and at moments defensively as well. But the inconsistencies, especially in some of the biggest games of the season, it can ruin the entire season for the team. So if you cannot rely on someone like him and you rather rely on someone like Eric Dyer to come in and bring in some stability, that's a really bad sign for someone like Upamecano. So I'm going to put him onto the transfer list because it's a rumor as well. For me, it's time for Nabri to go. Don't get me wrong, I think he's great and everything, but he gets injured way too often. Just like Kingsley Coman, he's going to go on there. Lima, Bowie. Lima has shown performances this season where he just chases people down for 90 to 120 minutes. There's no way I'm letting him go. Much respect to that man. Bowie gets another chance. He's going to have to battle it out with Mazarawi. Whoever wins the battle plays for me. And then moving on from that, Thomas Müller, after the next season, I think I'm going to potentially end this career and just release him because I think Thomas Müller should be a person that actually moves up in the club from a player into like the director's level. That is what Bayern Munich owners actually want to do as well. Uli Hoeneß and Omeniga are very interested in that. So we'll see how that goes. And uh, Matis Tell, this kid is going to be ridiculous. If Sané plays on the right, and Matis Tell could play on the left like he has done many times, I'd be a happy man, especially if Kingsley Coman and Nabri leave. He could get that chance finally to play in the starting 11 a lot more, and I think it's the right choice. So, Chupo Muting, goodbye. Perez goes out on loan. As far as I know, uh, they are looking to loan him out. And the fact that Palovic hasn't been upgraded from a 68 to like at least a 74 is a disgrace. The man has played ridiculously well for Bayern Munich and has been included in the German national team for the Euros. I mean, what else do you want? And talking about the Euros... Here's something very important. There's a man that has been called up to the German national team. It is Brian Gruda from the likes of Mainz. Such a talented player. And right now, as we speak, he was at the German national team. He did get a little bit of experience for the first time he was called up right before the Euros. And he says, absolutely, I would love to move to Bayern, basically. Every footballer dreams of playing for Bayern as a kid. Yes. This man is out there letting everyone know that he wants to move to Bayern Munich and he is expected to become one of the best players in German football right now. Everyone's looking at him. So it only makes sense to bring him into this squad to be alongside the likes of Pavlovic, to learn from the likes of Musiala and play in this team at some point. But I am bringing him in to potentially loan him back to a team like Mainz or somewhere else 
And the fact that Pavlovich is a 68 and I cannot just put him next to Kimmich here annoys the hell out of me. I think he should be so much higher rated and he should be the number one in that midfield, even above someone like Kimmich if needed. But that is not possible. So both of these guys are going to go out on loan and hopefully get plenty of playtime elsewhere to then return as potential starters for Bayern Munich. So something just happened. I was sat there thinking about which midfielder to possibly bring in to take this Bayern team to the next level. And Bayern Leverkusen came in with an offer. Take a look at it. They're offering me 41 million market value Ezequiel Palacios plus... 7.2 million for Kingsley Coman. I mean, this would be some transfer. I'm going to go for 14 million here. See what they say. They agree. 14 million plus Palacios, who was one of the best midfielders in the Bundesliga, for Kingsley Coman, who I personally would never sell. But apparently, that is what Bayern Munich is wanting to do because of the inconsistencies with the injuries and everything, just like it is with the likes of uh, Gnabry as well. They want a more strength, powerful team that can basically play game after game. And when you're looking for that, Kingsley Command sadly isn't the one. So Palacios into that midfield of Bayern, going back to the old Bayern that would just keep buying the best players in the Bundesliga. This is this fits really well. So Konrad Leimer turns into the backup for every single position as he is. And Palacios comes in and takes over the center midfield spot next to Kimmich. Mate, I'm telling you right now, if that happens, Bayern dominate the hell out of the league. I think Palacios is one of the best midfielders in world football. I watched him play so many times in a previous season, and for me, he is the one. And there is one indication to the fact that maybe that Leverkusen would like to sell Palacios, and that is the fact that they're signing Alex Garcia from Girona, the midfielder who I also love, and he's going to move to Leverkusen. And I'm thinking, why? You have Palacios, you have Grani Chaka, who has been one of your best players, and those are the two midfield positions. And then you have national team player Robert Andrich in that squad as well. So why would you bring in another exceptional midfielder unless you already have the idea to sell Palacios for big money because every team in Europe should be chasing this man right now. So all I'm thinking is, thank you for making an offer for Kingsley Coman. We appreciate it and we'll take Palacios. Thank you very much. I am signing one more player before we go into this season. And that is a man that has gotten 16 goals in the past 365 days of four Hoffenheim. And he is someone that was also potentially called up to the German national team. I believe he was in the provisionary squad. It is Maximilian Bayer, Hoffenheim's surprise candidate for their player of the season. He was amazing. And now he comes in because Matis Tell will turn into a left wing. And that way, Bayer is coming in now to be the backup striker to the likes of Harry Kane. There are a lot of things that I like about this guy. He seems quite physical. He's six foot one tall, but he still has a lot of pace. And in front of goal, he shows a lot of composure. So I think he could be ideal for a team like Bayern Munich to be the backup. And Matis Tell, again, as I said before, he's going to be a left wing. Leroy Sané is going to be a right wing. We're going to be playing attacking football. And one thing I also want to let you know is that the season or the objective for this video is not just to win the Champions League. We want to win the treble. German Cup, Bundesliga title and Champions League all in one season or nothing. It's all or nothing. In the Bundesliga this season, it is us at the top. Bayern Munich back at the top after allowing Leverkusen to dominate the league like they did. And I'm actually really excited to see what Xabi Alonso is going to be cooking up next season. Do you guys in the comments believe that he actually will be able to win it back to back with Leverkusen, considering that he probably isn't going to be losing too many players, except maybe Palacios and Frimpong, who apparently has a release clause i don't think anyone else is leaving so let's see what happens now we have won the league in the cup though we got kicked out dortmund have won the german cup and we got kicked out by freaking heidenheim and that is upsetting because in the champions league my friends group stages first 
in the round of 16, we did get past the likes of PSV Eindhoven on penalties. In the quarterfinals, we beat Arsenal. Semi-finals, we beat Manchester City, the former side of company, to then play against Barcelona in the Champions League final. But because the treble is impossible, we will just go ahead and simulate this one, and I really hope we win it because that would be a great sign for this team's future. Look at the stats of the players. It is looking great, except for Noya, who has gone down. Quick simming it, and we lose. Ferran Torres and Frankie de Jong, the last team I rebuild, FC Barcelona, have kicked us out of the Champions League, and that is obviously not good enough Musiala the only one to step up and get something done and Bayern giving them the chance to come back and win it that is disgusting that is not the level of Bayern Munich and Bayern only winning the Bundesliga trophy that's enough to get you fired so this was not great we gotta be doing a lot better at least two trophies in the next season stats wise again things are looking good for the players but they got to step it up even more. Harry Kane, Sané, Musiala, and Tell, the ones with the most goals. Maximilian Bayer off the bench, performing exactly the way I wanted it to. And right now, with Thomas Müller getting a minus four, it's time to release him and allow him to go up into the director's board. The biggest mistake that Bayern Munich made at the start of last season was to let go Stanisic to the likes of Bayer Leverkusen, a right back slash center back who would have been ideal for many of the problems that Bayern suffered. Instead, he was at Leverkusen performing really well at times and yeah, now he is saying that he wants to stay at Leverkusen and I, I totally get it. We are selling him for 25 million right now. We are also selling Nuber, who was supposed to become the backup to Manuel Noya. Don't get me wrong, he's a decent goalkeeper, but he's just not the one to lead Bayern into the future, in my opinion. Now that we have basically retired Manuel Noya as well, I've decided that we are going to be going in for a new goalkeeper. The decision has been made, and this one is odd. That's what she said. Unai Simon, the goalkeeper from Athletic Bilbao. As you guys know, Athletic Bilbao has a very, very strong policy of what players they will be playing and everything like that. And they already have a young kid coming through in their team that would allow someone like Unai Simon to actually move at this point without feeling bad about leaving Athletic Bilbao. And I think he would look amazing in a Bayern kit. Just in my head, picturing him in that Bayern Munich kit, it just feels right. So for that reason, I'm going for Unai Simon. And here's the catch. Your dummy content creator right here recording this video forgot to sign a goalkeeper in the first transfer window. So now I am in the January transfer window and haha, this is the best part. Alfonso Davies left the team. Yes, Alfonso Davies has left. He had his release clause triggered. So maybe it's just meant to be and the contract actually doesn't get extended and he still leaves for Real Madrid. Maybe this is a sign, but... We have to play with Guerrero for now, but I think there is one clear candidate that just makes too much sense for company to sign into the Bayern Munich squad. There is one man that makes the most sense to join likes of Bayern, and that, my friends, is Ian Martin. 10 million plus Rafa Guerrero for the Chelsea slash Dortmund player to join Bayern and you might be thinking why would he go from from Dortmund where he reached the Champions League final to the likes of Bayern first of all Ian Matsin was the player that played for company at Burnley that was his breakout season he was unstoppable when he was playing for Burnley in that left side for them he was moving forward with the ball he was amazing with passing play crosses everything and anything you could ask of from a left back in championship level he could provide every single piece of that to you when he was playing at Burnley then he moves to Chelsea and they think no Cucurella and Chilwell will be enough thank you you can go somewhere else and I lost my mind I thought you guys are dumb how do you make a decision like that he moves to Dortmund and ends up playing in that side instantly huge impact on the team 
and he go into the Champions League final with him as their left back. And he played a big role for Dortmund this season. And I get it. In the final, he messed up. He did make a big mistake. And Dortmund end up losing. But Dortmund want to sign him. His release clause apparently is 35 million. Dortmund are offering 25. Which means if Alfonso was to leave, Company and Martin could be reunited at Bayern Munich. I think originally, there was probably no way for Martin to move from Dortmund to Bayern. But now that company is there, if those two had a good relationship at Burnley, there's a good chance that Bayern is going to swoop in for him. But it depends on Davies. Here we are again at the end of a season and with Martin up to an 84 and Sasha Bowie having won the battle against Mazraoui. That is the back line with Palacios in the middle and the rest of the team ready to roll as we step up into the German Cup final to beat Leipzig. And we do. Kimmich, Musiala and Leroy Sané. All the lads stepping up. But here's the catch. In the Bundesliga, or in the Cup, I should say, we did really well, right? I'm very satisfied with that. But in the league, bro, what happened? We got third. This is unacceptable. We lost to the team that we just beat in the final. Four-point gap. In the Cup, we obviously won. In the Champions League, watch this. Third in the group stages behind Olympique Marseille and Manchester United. Now, here's the reason why. As I told you before, I think I did sell Nubu, I did sell Manuel Neuer, and Alfonso Davies, his release clause was triggered before the season actually began. Then, for whatever weird reason, I just went ahead and simulated the January. So the first half of the season was horrific because we didn't have a goalkeeper. We had Ulreich in goal, who had a 70 rating, and no left back apart from Guerrero. So it's it's my bad. It definitely is my fault for the team not performing as well this year. But statistically, I mean, we have a bunch of 90 pluses in here. This team is going to get to a spot where it's going to rock it out and do extremely well. Next season, we're going to be focusing even more on bringing in backup players that will fill up this bench and make it very, very strong. But for this season, I guess it's enough. At least we have won a trophy despite my mistake. Harry Kane, Leroy Sané, Palacios, the top scorers. And then it's Musiala coming in as well with 10 goals for himself and 16 assists from that camp position. Honestly, there is no player in the world right now that I would love watching more than Musiala and Florian Wirtz. These two are just exceptional at the moment. If you guys get the chance, watch every game they play. England could disrespect him. Gareth Southgate disrespect him. I mean, the country doesn't. It seems like every single person wanted him to be part of the English national team. But Lewis freaking dunk got it because he has a little bit of experience. Jared Branthwaite was unbelievable for Everton. He is possibly one of the main reasons as to why they didn't get relegated despite all the point deductions. And now he is part of our team. I didn't even realize that he was already playing for Leverkusen, but in he comes for Tarek Buchmann, who is also a big talent, by the way. But he is going to be our backup. And I also brought in Jonas Orbik, who apparently is linked to Bayern Munich as well as a potential future Manuel Neuer replacement as well. He played at Greuther Fürth in the second division last season and has shown really good performances. I believe he's part of the youth national team setup. And uh, yeah, there he is. He's now part of our team, just like Jared Branthwaite is. And with a bunch of these players coming back from loan, like Pavlovic and Gruda, we actually have a very, very solid bench as well now. It does seem like, though, we should be buying a couple of wingers because that is a problem situation. When I say this, do not lose your mind. But I might have just signed a player that might be even more talented than Musiala and Wirtz. And that is a mad thing to say, considering Ryan Cherki has only shown his abilities at Olympique Lyon at certain parts of his game. I am talking about just raw natural street football type talent and he can play in any position in the attack which just makes him basically the perfect player to sign for this team and i get it i totally understand i'm not actually comparing musiala who's world class to someone like cherki but based on the things that this guy can do on the pitch if he was just half as professional 
as these other lads. Trust me, he would be... Ah, oh, mate, he's so good. So, I'm just saying, he joins us and he's going to be a backup, but he can play a big role in this team. Ryan Cherky, there's nothing I want more than you to go ahead and actually become professional about the way you live your life and the way you step onto the training pitch and how you play on the football pitch at the end of the day. So, Ryan, don't disappoint me. I'm giving you a massive chance at Bayern. Hopefully, the culture here at the club will be positive for you. Third in the Bundesliga, but we made it into the cup final. And right now, we are beating seemingly everybody. And that's exactly what needs to happen for us to still win the Bundesliga title. Wins all around, Champions League finalists and German Cup finalists against Leverkusen and then in a Champions League against it's against Tottenham. Please, have we won the Bundesliga? That would mean that this is the season. Yes, we have! Better goal difference than Leverkusen. Get in there! Beautiful, lads. Amazing work. Same results as Leverkusen there with the wins, draws and losses, but... This is it. Harry Kane, Musiala, Matisse Tell, Leroy Sané. I think that could be our front three, uh, front four, especially if Navri and Coman do get moved on. But I don't think it's going to be both of them. Kimmich, Palacios, the midfield of dreams. You have Matson in the left back position, replacing Alfonso. Kim and Jay, De Ligt, Sasha Bowie taking that position and going with it. And Unai Simon replacing the likes of Manuel Neuer with amazing backup players for this Bayern Munich squad. And then statistically, we are looking at who? We are looking at Harry Kane. 38 and 10. He is the one leading the side alongside Sané, Musiala and Matisse Tell, but he is the guy. You're not that guy. So Leverkusen, you lost out on the trophy and you have an insane team with Griezmann and Gabriel Jesus, but it's us winning. Sané, 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 hat-trick in the German Cup final. Company comes into the Bayern squad and his former teammate destroys the opponent. Now on to the Champions League final, which obviously I will step into myself. So this is the moment of truth. We have won two big trophies. Let's make it a treble. And let's play against Spurs, who are coming in with Jonathan David and Tijani Reinders. Anyone else? Renan Lodi as new players, but the rest looks very familiar. GG Spurs. As we step onto the pitch right here, I just want to let you guys know that the whole YouTube issue has been resolved and I'm able to earn my money again through making these videos. It was a scary week. I gotta be honest, I couldn't sleep. I was so worried. All of it happening during a time where we just moved into a new country and had so many expenses. It would have been horrific to not be able to earn money for like three or four months, which was the outlook that I had. But now everything's good. We're back to normal and I'm madly motivated to win this freaking game, especially for my beautiful Bayern. Yo, can we step up? Can we step up? Yes, we can with Unai Simon. Early big save. Postacoglu is unhappy. Good try. Unai Simon will keep this up for as long as he has to. The replacement of Manuel Neuer, the most impressive player in the first 15 minutes. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why is he so quick? That's Jonathan David. Okay. Third time's a charm. Tottenham score. And you know what? Jonathan David to Spurs would actually be a transfer that makes sense. I think that would be a really good transfer. But hey. Get back to the game. You're doing terrible. Jonathan David just sprinting away from Kim Min Jae. I'm in there. I'm putting in a tackle with Kim, which actually worked out to not be a penalty. I'm very surprised. Harry Kane. Down the left. Matisse Tell. Come on, Matisse. Come on, Matisse. Oh, mate. What is that? Out of all the teams to lose to in a Champions League final, losing against Spurs would be devastating because we do have Harry Kane in our team who obviously joined from Spurs, who are notoriously known for not winning freaking trophies. Yes, Kimmich. Yes, Kimmich. Move with me, lads. Move with me. Harry Kane. Harry Kane against Spurs. If anyone can, it's Harry, right? 
It is Harry Kane celebrating an 88th minute goal against the side that he played for for so many years. Company and his boys still have the chance to win this. Extra time it is. The referee blows the whistle. We just made the comeback happen. We don't need changes yet, but if we do, we have good players ready to roll. All I know from this is I cannot let this go into extra time. I uh, Into penalties, sorry. I know I will lose in penalties. So Harry, I need you again. And he steps up when you need him the most. Harry Kane, two goals in a Champions League final against Spurs. You couldn't write it any better than that. Matisse Tell sprinting. Matisse, absolutely lovely footwork there from the lad. Musiala just need one more. At halftime, it's time to bring on a few fresh legs. Cherki, Gruda and Bayer coming on for the counter-attacking footy. Palacios comes off for Lima the Beast and I am also bringing on Branthwaite. Branthwaite chasing it down late into the game. I can't believe it. Too nice, Simon. Thank you. Manuel Neuer will be proud of that. What the hell have I just done there? Okay, I want it back. I thought I just messed up everything. Cherki, skill moves, good passes. That's what he's about. Baya on to the right hand side. Leroy Sane, last minute of the game. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm winning the Champions League. That's what I'm doing. Get in there. So, Vincent Company. I'm sorry if I said Vincent at some point in this video. I probably have out of habit. But Kimmich is the one lifting the trophy for you, pal. This is the treble sealed. And that is me happy. Hope you guys have a great day. I'll catch you on the next one. Bayern back on top. That's all I want to see. Take care and peace.